So welcome everybody who's just coming in. I went ahead and got started. I had no idea there was going to be a flood as soon as I did that. Um, but I'm Beth Carroll, and we're rolling because I've got a lot to cover. <laughs> All right, this is the messy world of asset-based uh, roles, right? This is, and that I've mapped out. That's exactly how they all interact with each other, right? So you want to think about how are you going to develop an incentive compensation plan for the whole system that's going to work for the whole system and make sure that they're not fighting against each other, right? You want them conscious of safety at all times. You want them working and helping recruiting bring in more drivers. You want them helping each other as much as possible. So I have found that there actually is, it's very difficult to do that all at one time. Most organizations just don't have the bandwidth to do a comp redesign project that tackles everybody at once. It can be overwhelming. I'm in one of those right now and it's gone on six months longer than it should have, right? Because it's just overwhelming to try to do all of it at one time. So it's better if you can do it in little chunks. And in asset side, it does work. On brokerage side, it's usually small enough or you only have like five or six roles. You can do brokerage, even if it's a big brokerage. You can do brokerage all at one time. But in asset, I would say start with recruiting, right? Those are probably your most variable already and they're probably where you're gonna get your most bang for your buck in terms of adjusting your incentive compensation plan. Th considering though, right now, this may be the one time in, in <laughs> the last five years or so that I would say this, if your recruiting plan is working, don't try to fix it, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now is not the time to screw up your recruiting plan because we all know we have a real problem getting drivers in. So you don't want to mess with it. If you can live with it right now, let it be, okay? There are a lot of recruiters out there that are making a ton of money. And maybe that's okay if they're bringing in enough drivers for you, okay? However, if you do feel like it's broken, just be aware that this may be an area you have to tread carefully with because you don't want to lose your whole recruiting staff right now. Okay. Uh, driver retention. So that's going to be your fleet managers, your contractor relations if you're dealing with owner-operators load planners, those kinds of jobs. I would tackle that little pocket first. Then think about drivers. Have you changed how you pay your drivers lately? More than just giving them a petty per mile increase, okay? Have you thought about doing a safety bonus for your drivers? Have you thought about doing a fuel bonus for your drivers? Have you thought about changing the way they earn their miles to do something that actually makes it so they get more money when they go over 2,200 miles a week or whatever your marker is, right? Do something that aligns good performance for them with good results for your business. Then think about the sales side. You may think this is weird. She didn't start with sales. Not in this world. You've got to make sure that you can deliver it before you can sell it. Okay? So in this world, I would actually do sales next. So third in line. And so that's thinking about customer service, sales, pricing, those kinds of roles. Then you get into asset management, some more of like the Support functions, they're not really support in trucking, but a um, little bit more back office-y, maintenance, safety, those kinds of things. Then you talk about accounting, IT, HR, et cetera. So that's a good way to approach a compensation project for an asset company. 